topic is biotechnology. We're going to look at how genetics has changed the world that we live in today. First thing we have is selective breeding. If you look at the picture, you'll notice that it has two different types of plants. One is the diseased African cotton plant, and the other one is a healthy American cotton plant. What they want to do is they want to be able to grow in Africa a healthy cotton plant. So what did they do? Well, they breeded the healthy American and the diseased African together, and then they wound up with a tree with the trait that they wanted. This one had, this one was a healthy cotton plant that was now able to produce cotton in Africa. This is called selective breeding. It's when you mate or breed two organisms to get the trait that you want. The next topic is genetic engineering. A diagram on the right does a good job of breaking down what you need to know. It looks very similar to the one that we had been studying on in class, and it's on the most recent regents exam. If you look, there are two types of cells present. There's a human cell and a bacterial cell. What they have done is they've removed the gene that they wanted from the human cell, and then they've cut it. What did they use to cut the DNA? Well, they use these things called enzymes. So the first thing that they do is they identify the gene of interest. And then after they've identified the gene, they're going to use enzymes to cut the DNA. Now, they've used enzymes on both the human DNA and the bacterial DNA. They've used the same exact enzyme so that eventually they can come together and they can form what's known as recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA is when you have two different species of DNA and you've combined them together. The name kind of makes sense because what have you done? You've combined two different types of DNA. After that, they put it inside of the bacterial cell. That bacterial cell is then able to continuously divide over and over and over again through a process known as asexual reproduction. And eventually, you can have hundreds if not millions of bacterial cells that are all able to produce the desired protein that you want. Because remember, genes, once you find out what gene you want, then you can actually make the protein that you want. Let's look at the notes section. So genetic engineering, if we're looking for a key word for genetic engineering, you really want to look for that alter. Because what you're doing is, you're changing, you're manipulating the genes. You're actually taking a different genetic code, those A, T, C's, and G's, and you're putting a different code into whatever desired organism you have. The next one looks at the step of genetic engineering. You identify the gene, you remove it, remove it using enzymes, then you paste it, and actually you paste it also using enzymes. And then you're able to make your desired protein. The desired protein that they most likely will ask about on the regions could include things like hormones, could include insulin, which is a type of hormone, or could also include HGH, which is an abbreviation for human growth hormone. Next thing we have is gel electrophoresis. I go into a lot of detail in gel electrophoresis on the Relationships and Biodiversity Review. Here's just a quick overview. Gel electrophoresis is a process that allows you to separate DNA based on size. How is that possible? Well, what happens is that you run an electric current. The electric current is negative towards the wells. The wells are going to be your starting gates. And then it's going to be positive towards the end of what we refer to as the gel. If you don't remember, DNA has a negative charge. Let's write that down. So we've got DNA. DNA has a negative charge. Since it has a negative charge, it gets attracted to the positive side. So the electric current causes the DNA to run out of those wells. Next thing that you need to know is how does it separate based on size. Well, these bands that you see, they actually represent the number of bases that are present. So the more bases that are present, the heavier that band is going to be. So the small bands are able to travel further. That would mean that this one right here, this is the largest band. Uh, sorry, this is the smallest band. 
because it's the furthest from your starting gate. Whereas the ones all the way up to the top, those are your largest. They're your largest because they're the heaviest and they just can't make it up far in a given time. Why do we do this? We use this to identify suspects and to do different types of paternity testing. Next thing we have is cloning. Cloning is when you make an identical copy or an exact replica of an organism. The diagram was out of recent regions. So I took break it down so it doesn't look quite as confusing. So what you need to do is you need to get a body cell and you remove the nucleus. We're going to follow this nucleus as it moves through the diagram. Now remember, whoever donates the nucleus, that's who you're making a clone of. So in this case, you're making a clone of the body cell. If we look at the egg cell, we take the egg cell and they actually remove the nucleus. If we're following this nucleus, it's actually gone. They tossed it out. We're not going to look at that anymore. The reason why that's important is because if we're talking about, let's say, humans, that would only have 23 chromosomes, whereas the body cell that we're cloning has the whole set. Let's continue following that blue nucleus. As the nucleus goes, what they do is they put that into the egg cell. So now the egg cell, which we started off with, now houses the nucleus. They either use a chemical or an electrical impulse, and that electrical impulse stimulates it to start to divide. At this point, this cell with the fused egg, with the egg cell and the nucleus, it thinks it's a zygote. So then it starts undergoing embryonic development. Since it's undergoing embryonic development, eventually, if everything works out right, it's going to make offspring. Last thing, why do we not do all of this with humans? The main reason why we're currently not doing this with humans is because of the moral and ethical complications that occur. Many people do not like biotechnology because they say that they're playing God. The two terms that you'll most likely be able to see are going to be moral and ethical.